How's it going, everyone? Try and fucking comb my fucking mane. Alright, talking boxing. What a fucked up week, man. Went all the way to California, came back here, watched boxing. Whole lot of fucking boxing this week, man. Alright, hold up here. Hold up. Alright, let's get started. Before the comments start coming in, yes, I'm doing this one shirtless. No, I do not give a fuck. Okay, so let's uh, let's get the elephant out of the room. <sighs> Eve Ulysses, California. First, I'll talk about the trip. Then I'll talk about the fight. Then I'll talk about the other fights that went down this weekend. And then we'll talk about the stuff that's coming up, all right? So if you got any questions, leave them below. I'll get to them eventually. Replays of this will be available on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I also threw it up on YouTube. Okay, so. The trip to California. Never been to California. Never seen the Pacific Ocean. I've been to Vancouver, but literally for no time, and I didn't get to go down to the water. So, completely different. Uh, I got to fly over with Eve Ulysses' dad. Super dude. Uh, worked his whole life. Uh, he's retired now. And, uh, you know, he's one of those dudes that had a blue-collar job, but is well-read nonetheless. You know, speaks a couple languages. Very cool dude. Cool travel companion. And, uh... I don't know if you guys know this, but, uh... I can fucking talk a lot. And, uh, he can hold his own. Which is, you know, fun for me. And, uh, you know... Long story short... I was also honored that I got the privilege of, you know, hanging with him. So, we get down to California... First, I, I did get stopped uh, by uh, customs on the way out. Really, really trippy because I was like, fuck, man, I washed my stuff three times. There's no way. Long story short, because of my real name, it seems there's someone else out there with my real name that's a really bad person. And uh, they just wanted to make sure. So we only got detained for like 15 minutes. But I, I, I'll admit it was embarrassing because here's his father like panic mode. Like, what the fuck? How come I'm not going to get to see my son? And it was my fault, you know. But it turned out good because we only got stopped for 15 minutes. They were just checking. But nonetheless, it was a bit of a panic. Um, that being said, long-ass flight, lay over in Chicago, get to California, get to the Airbnb. I thought Ulysses was going to be sleeping in the hotel like we did in New York. Uh, in New York... I got to room with a couple of other people, but I wasn't with Eve. And here was uh, Ulysses himself. So, uh, I got a really first-hand look at what a fighter goes through. Uh, you know, I got to hang out with them. When they went to eat, I went with them. When they went down to the beach, I went with them. They went to play some basketball, I went with them. I got a shit ton of pictures, which, for obvious reasons, uh, I didn't put up yet, which I will do this week, so make sure to check those out. California is a fly fucking town, and the part we were in was like a beach resort community. There was fucking nobody on the beach, bro. Uh, the night before the fight, well, actually, I'll get to this part first, so I, I already know that there's, you know, I've got my haters, Right, I, I've got people that shake my hand, but you know, talk out the side of their mouth. That happens. But uh, here's the thing, right? I smoke weed. I don't hide it. Uh, I'm not embarrassed by it. My life has improved from it. Uh, in case you don't know me on a personal level, let me clue you in. Some slight OCD issues. Um, a little hyperactive mind, so. I tend to overthink things, I tend to uh, say what I'm thinking, uh, and as you can tell, I can talk for days. 
And that's mainly because I'm having three conversations in my mind right now as I'm speaking to you. I'm thinking about what I'm going to say next. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do after the show. I'm, I've, I've, got, I, I've got a busy mind, I guess. And, uh, you know, I don't sleep much. I've got other issues, arthritis and all that. The weed has made my life better. Now, that being said, I also smoke a lot, but not a lot of weed. You know, people don't understand this. Let me explain. The typical pot smoker in your mind smokes to get high and blotted and lose himself. I smoke seven grams a week. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's a minimal amount. I literally smoke a gram a day and I smoke all day. So I mix it with tobacco, obviously. Uh, I was originally a hash guy, but that's a whole nother story. Point being, I smoke the weed all day long and it keeps my brain at, you know, 70 instead of me running at 100 and then I start repeating myself and I start doing stuff like counting ceiling tiles and uh, you know I, I can't stop myself from doing certain things or I can't stop a certain thought pattern so I'll be stuck on a subject and it'll fucking drive me nuts um, now I won't lie this uh, thing that I'm complaining about is also part of the reason I think I'm good at what I do because I break shit down uh, to the smallest detail. I look at everything. Ring, shoelaces, uh, guys arches on their feet. Uh, you know, I, I, I overdo it sometimes. But nonetheless, I would be overdoing it on everything if I didn't smoke. So, there is medicinal marijuana in California. And I was lucky enough to find a place and partake. Um, I'm not going to name names or tell stories out of school because I was very privileged to be a part of something, but I am going to give you guys an inside look to things, right? And I'm not going to bullshit you, as you know. So, um, I got somebody to drive me down and I got this really cool dispensary. By the way, they fucking know how to do it. Jesus. Wow. Wow. Uh, I walked in and it was literally like a living room and there was a movie playing. There was a bunch of people just watching a movie. Oh, shit. Hold on. I turned my ringer off. Sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, I got two grams. And, uh, of course, I did not smoke around the champ. I didn't, didn't do anything around the champ. Um, I would literally go walk in the water. Um, which, by the way, I found out you're not supposed to smoke on the beach, but uh, I found out after I did it, so technically, you know. Um, anyway, long story short, uh, I did smoke. I don't hide that. I, I think I smoked in my stories while I was down there, so I don't, you know, it's not something I think about, but I got, a, I got some mentions from a couple of other so-called journalists, so I just wanted to clear the air about that conversation here. I don't want to make it sound like I was doing anything around the chat. Just just to give you an idea, I don't even know what they're testing for, so I don't want to fuck around with that shit. It's not something I would do. But um, the night before the fight, I was lucky enough to grab a six-pack of Modelo, and I sat in the water, and I just, you know, kind of zoned out in the beach and thought about how big of a moment this was for me. Um, you know, boxing has given me so much. Uh, the people involved in boxing, and I mean the real people, uh, the fighters, and, uh, you know, the real deal promoters out there, uh, they show me love, man. I, I really do appreciate it, and that's the only love I give a fuck about. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, not to shit on any of the fans or anything like that, but, like, as long as I got the love of the fighters and the people that really give a fuck about boxing, then I'm cool, you know what I mean? And, uh... It was such a big moment for me, you know, I was really taking it in. And uh, by the way, I'm writing something. I'm not done yet because I obviously, I kind of had, which is what I'm going to get to, but I kind of had the ending planned out in my head and it didn't turn out like I thought it would. So I got to finish what I'm writing. Got to go to the hangar. Cool venue. Um, knowledgeable boxing fans. Kind of dickheads. Uh, you know. But it is what it is. They're hard on people, especially if you're not from there. Um, you'll see my pictures probably tomorrow. But um, they're openly betting in the crowd. Like, money is changing hands. And, uh, 
it, it's just a really cool boxing atmosphere. Uh, really cool venue. Now, uh, Golden Boy kept talking about how organized they were, but between you and me, I didn't find them very organized. I didn't have a press pass after all, and I kind of got to do whatever the fuck I wanted to do anyway. Nobody was stopping me. I was wearing a U Eve Ulysses tracksuit, so I guess, you know, that did it. But I was really stunned. I had access to anything. I was, like, walking in rooms that, you know, even I thought, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be here. But anyway, um, you know, I got to watch the whole hand wrap thing and then the ref give him the rules and the WBA give him rules and then I got to watch you know I got to hang with the team you know I got I got to pick Renal Bravaya's mind I got to pick Claudio's mind who's an excellent cut man and does a meticulous job on hand wraps um, you know Eve Ulysses team is you know he's got a big team and uh Everybody's got their tasks, and everybody is very skilled. The event. Uh, got a couple of exciting fights. Got to watch a Romanian guy do his pro debut. He was all excited when he found out that I used to... Well, I still know Luce Bute, but I used to take pictures of him and stuff. And I got, like, a couple shots of him, and he was super pumped about that. Uh, got to meet Demetrius Ballard. Big fan of his. I like the kid. I just like the kid. And, uh, you know, he had a tough one. He got a, a draw. Uh, his opponent, Falcao, is actually a friend of Eve Ulysses. So I actually like both dudes. Falcao is a fucking bad motherfucker. And, uh, you know, to be fair, the draw was kind of good. I, I really, you know, because I like both guys. Maybe they'll do it again. I hope they do. Uh, that being said, the main event now. So it's a 12-round fight. And I already knew from listening to the coaches and everybody talk that they were planning to play it slow. And the first four rounds, they didn't really give a fuck about. Now, that being said, in my book, Eve Ulysses won the third round. But, like I said, they weren't stressing about the first four rounds. Now, I'm not in the corner. I'm in the crowd. And I was floating in between taking pictures and hanging out with his dad that was in a different section with um, uh, some people that he invited. And... Uh, I also got to sit ringside with Antonin Decari. So, uh, round five, round six, round seven. I'm sitting there, and it's making me nervous. Um, now, Ulysses isn't losing, but he's not winning. He's not doing enough, right? And um, his opponent, I got to hand it to him, man. You know, at the weigh-ins, the thing that struck me about his opponent is, fuck, this guy's hungry. He looks like he's starving. Like, he was ready to die in there. He was ready to die in there. I'm not even sure. That, like, he did not look good after 12 rounds, but he was ready to die in there. And you see, Eve had the opposite problem. Eve never emptied the tank. Uh, between you and me, I honestly think Eve Ulysses probably could have went uh, for a run afterwards, uh, energy level-wise. And uh, we'll get to that. So, eighth round hits... And at this point, I'm looking at Antene. I'm like, he has to do more, right? Tell me he has to do more. I'm not crazy. I, I'm, I'm really fucking nervous right now. He goes, no, he has to do more. You're not crazy. Uh, so we started yelling. You know, we're cheering him on. Now, here's the thing that most of you don't understand about fighters. They don't fucking hear the crowd. You might think they're hearing you, but they're, they're really not. If they're focused, they're not fucking hearing you. And, uh, you know, it's a miracle to hear the corners, but... The point is, they're not hearing you. They're focused on their fight. And that being said, Eve Ulysses is kind of um, at the mercy of his corner to get information. So if you're losing the round, they got to tell you. If you need to do something a little more, they got to tell you. It's This is what they're there for. At Ulysses level, it's no longer about schooling, about boxing. It's, you know, just little comments that, you know, you might need to do this or watch out for this. Or the point is, I'm not a fucking coach, okay? And as far as a coaching staff goes, this is what's so fucking baffling to me. His corner is good. It's not a question of his corner not being good. His corner is good. It's as good as you can get in this town. But I don't know what, what went wrong. Because... See, I'm not the only one saying this. I'm not some fucking genius here. 
If you watch the fucking broadcast, Dougie Fisher is saying it himself. His corner needs to be telling him to do more. And instead, they were telling him to be careful. Now, I don't want to take everything off of Ulysses and put it all on the coaches. Because somewhere in there, Ulysses needed to walk into that fight like Barroso did. Because you see, Barroso's corner, every round, they were telling him he was losing. That he needed to do more. Every round, they asked for more. By the 12th round came, Barroso had nothing left. But he gave it everything he had. And that was good enough. Now, to tip my hat to him, uh, he was landing the hook to the body beautifully. And uh, as far as Ulysses getting touched, that is the best anyone's ever done. One score was wide for my taste, but the other two scores were pretty much the way I saw it. It was a tough pill to swallow. And a lot of people made comments afterwards saying, you know, they didn't like Ulysses looking like he was surprised. But like I said, you need to understand the fighter is not watching the fight. The fighter is in the fight. And uh, he only knows what he's been told. So even after the 12th bell round, uh, rang, it's not like they were telling him, I don't think we got it, man. So, uh, you know... What can Ulysses do in the future? I don't know. I wish I knew. I wish I knew. Um, I mean, he could fight tomorrow. It's not like he was hurt. Some time off. You know, he's got he's to figure things out. Uh, I know he took it hard. It was, it's tough. And if you know fighters, you know, they put everything into this. They put everything into it. And, you know, all the pressure and all the other bullshit that comes along with it. It's a tough fucking pill to swallow. And, yeah. You know, he was lost. Because he doesn't understand why his corner didn't tell him the house was on fire. You know, he's standing there in the ashes and nobody told him the fucking house was on fire. So that's what that look was. And afterwards, the look was deep dissatisfaction. Because the truth is, he knew he was capable of more. That's what's fucked up. I don't know what they do, man. I don't know what they do. He's got to take some time off, and the team's got to talk to each other, and they got to figure something out. You know, I... I kind of wish somebody would have been mean with them. You know, I'm like, fuck are you doing? Come on, pick it up. But anyway, I, I don't want to, you know... I'm literally in an armchair, so I don't want an armchair coach here. Uh, like I said, that's as good of a coaching team as you can get in this fucking city. So, fuck. It was a tough fucking pill to swallow. And, you know, all the beauty of the trip and everything of the trip, man, it just kind of... You know, I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep at all. I rewatched the fight twice. Uh... We had, me and someone else went and bought a six pack, another six pack, thinking, you know, maybe for after the fight, not knowing what time we were going to come back. And, uh, well, obviously he went to bed, but I couldn't fucking sleep. So, mm. uh, you know, just really, really tough. The whole flight, I, I dozed off at one point, but not for very long. The whole flight, I was just contemplating and thinking stuff. And I still got plenty to say. Like I said, I'm writing something, so I'm trying not to tell you guys too much about the trip. But you guys are going to have to read about it. I'm, I'm doing a whole thing. Um, pictures going up this week. If you got questions about the Ulysses fight, don't be shy. Go ahead and ask me on here. I'll answer them man, as, as good as I can. Um, Alright, so that's enough of my rant of California for now. But uh, we're more than likely going to talk about it again. Because to be honest, that was fucking cool. It was, for my life, it's going to be a moment I'm going to think about. You know what I mean? So, as bittersweet as it was, I'm still going to think about it. Like it or not. Um, let's talk about Saturday afternoon. Joshua Ruiz. Listen, if it was Muhammad Ali, everyone would be talking about how great he is, I guess. But... I mean, Joshua won. I just, I'm not a fan of the whole backpedaling thing. 
I kind of wish he would have scored a knockdown in order to make this, you know. But that being said, like I said, if it was going to be a lackluster win for Joshua, then you're more than likely going to see a third. And I'm willing to bet you you'll see a third. I think probably by the summer you will see a third of this fight. Um, the other fights on the card, I, I really don't care about. Um, I'm happy for Andy. He made a big check. Uh, he made the history books. Nobody can knock him. He had nothing to fucking lose. Uh, it was tough for him to close the distance. He was chasing him. He wasn't cutting off the ring. <sighs> Fuck it. Maybe he gets a third try. I really hope he does. Let's go to the Bell Center. Because this, it, it cheered me up slightly. So, Bell Center. After flying in uh, from California, uh, I basically had one night. I slept like weird, but I slept like a good 10 hours. And then the next day, you know, watched the Joshua Ruiz fight and then got dressed and went to the Bell Center. Ida Tiger, Bell Center. First off, I don't remember the last time I went to an event and for the opening fight, half the crowd was already there. <laughs> uh, if you get a chance, go look at my Martin Valliard video. It's on my Facebook. Uh, she made her pro debut at the Bell Center, which is on its own. It's, it's a feat. But uh, she's got an extensive amateur background. She's a hell of a boxer. I had a tiger signed her, and it's for good reason. And then on top of that, she sold like quite a few tickets. She made herself quite a, new, a few new fans for sure, because like I said, the place was already half full, and she brought along like at least a hundred of her people. So it made noise, and because she made noise, and because they made noise, it kind of made other people make noise. And you know, for a four-round amateur fight, it was pretty loud. So I gotta hand it to them. Uh, good on her team for supporting her. Good on her fans. Um, the overall thing I want to talk about about this event, though, before I talk about all the fights, the fucking fans. Um, by the end of the night, it was a full house. And, you know, it's fun when we go to a venue where kids can go. And, you know, there's kids lining up to, to meet the fighters. There's, like, a little area where the fighters would walk by. And, it, like, I got a couple pictures of it. But they really got signatures from everyone they could. And that just warms my heart because you don't get to see it at the casino, right? Um, so it's just really cool. And it's really cool for the boxers too because there's nothing, there's no better feeling. You know, you just, you just won. You come out and there's some kid yelling your name. So how cool is that, right? Uh, the production. I mean, the stage, the lighting. Uh, they had a band, you know, doing music. Uh, they had uh, the lady do the VJ thing. They're giving away t-shirts. They gave away a cell phone at one point. Honestly, it was Christmas. It was Christmas for the boxing fans. Ida Tiger does it so fucking well. Um, I've yet to watch it. I'm going to probably re-watch it later tonight or maybe tomorrow on punchandgrace.com, which if you subscribe means you can re-watch as much shit as you want. Uh, fucking fun night of fights. Um... The main event was a little, you know, roller coastery, but we'll get to that. Uh, the only two downsides, the only two downsides, the regie were complaining about the time. A couple of the fights went longer than normal, or than they thought they would. So we didn't get Rafael Corshain to fight his ninth fight. And it sucks, because he had a few fans in the crowd, you know. Uh, there was a chance he was going to fight afterwards, but the regime just shut it down. Ida Tiger tried everything they could. I know they did. Don't make it up to Rafi, though. That's what's good about them, because if they do get a scratch on something, they usually double down. So, Rafi, don't worry. It's going to work out for you. Um, we missed out, but it'll be good on the next one. Uh, also, they couldn't get an opponent for Adam Braidwood on time, and uh, damn shame. It would have been fun to get Braidwood. Just, it would have been extra. I know I'm already, you know, asking for too much because it was a hell of a show. But it was, it would have been fun. All right, so let's talk about the other fights. Let me uh, light up here. Jermaine mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. wants to know what's next for David. Any chances? Ooh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. All right. So, first up, super... Featherweight. Really? Avery Martin Duval versus Corona. Um, expect highlights on Instagram real soon. 
<laughs> he hit the kid with a triple uppercut. I have a video with him, but the crowd was so loud and I didn't have my mic, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to try and fuck with it when I'm done with this. Uh, hopefully I'll throw it up and fuck it. If the sound's not good, I don't care. Well, I'll, I'll do my best. But the, the point is I interviewed him. He hit him with a triple uppercut and that's what finally put him away. Two knockdowns in that fight. Avery Martin Duval closes out the year at the Bell Center. You know, for these young fighters fighting at the Bell Center and then that kid getting the knockout like that, it's it's nothing but good, man. It's nothing but good karma. So Avery Martin Duval is going to look at a fun 2020. I can bet on that. Uh, next up, Lexan Matsur Paredes. Okay, so I got a little confession to make about this fight. So if you're a, a Lexan Matsur fan, you're going to want to listen to this one. So the kid's fighting. He's in a tough fucking fight. Paredes came to fucking win. Gotta give it to Paredes. Bless him. Bless him because this motherfucker really came to win. He looked like he was 42, so I have no idea how this motherfucker fought for a youth title. But props to Paredes. Bad little motherfucker. However, Lexan Mathieu. He did his usual shtick. But then when that didn't do it, he started amping up the level. You know, and it was the first time we got to see that other phase of Lexan. We got to see him, uh, you know, catch a punch and push through it and figure out a guy. You know, everyone else, he's just kind of fucking smoked through up until now. This guy, he had to figure out. He had to break down. So we got to see young Lexan box more. And uh, what a fucking way to win your first youth title. So here's my confession about this fight. And if you're a friend of his, you can tell him about it. Uh, I took my press pass off and I tucked it in my shirt and then I went and sat in the crowd so I could yell because, you know, it's kind of, I applaud when I'm in press row because I'm just applauding the boxing in between rounds or, you know, just applauding an effort, but I won't cheer, right? I, I put my pass under my shirt and I started yelling shit because I thought the kid needed to go to the body on this motherfucker because his usual stick wasn't working. Now, he didn't go to the body as much as I wanted him to, but he did go to the body. So I don't know if he heard me. But motherfucker, I was yelling like a fucking school child. He got me into the fight. I won't lie. I got into the fucking fight. I had to take my press pass off. I had to fucking yell some shit. Uh, he did so well. It was a really good fight for him. I was really, I was really impressed by him. Uh, the body work was nice. I wanted more, but the body work was nice. So... Uh, Lex and Metzger, man. You know, the future's bright for this kid. Future's real bright. You know, I know everyone wants to put him on the fast track to a world title there. I still want everyone to pump their fucking brakes on that shit. Kids only had eight fights, but... Alright, next up, Metzger Germain. I won't lie, I was fucking nervous about this. Um, I didn't know at the time it was going to be an eight-rounder, so it being an eight-rounder actually made me feel a little bit better. But uh, his opponent was pretty good. You know, he had to break him down. Germain had to, you know, roll up his sleeves and get to work. I was a little worried about it because it was so soon after his last fight. And he did, you know, suffer a, a, a bit of a defeat. You know, concussions are real and I didn't know how much time. You know, you don't know, man. You don't know. So i just, you know, rather be safe than sorry sometimes. But... Nonetheless, Victorious gets to, uh, you know, start 2020 fresh, feeling good about himself again. Like he told me afterwards, he just had to. It was bothering him, and if he didn't, it was going to continue to bother him. I can't knock him. It's done now. I think if I was part of his team, though, I still would have voted against it because, you know, your, even if he fought, I guarantee you he still has a little physical in, internally, you know, your joints and shit, all kinds of shit. So, you know, I'm sure he still had some wear and tear from his last fight. So, you know, at his age, you got to slow play it a little bit. But, like I said, he gets to start 2020 fresh, so that's all good. Uh, next up, we'll go with Kiki. Kim Clavel. She wins an NABF title. It's it's a perfect title for someone who's 10-0. and She went the distance. She boxed the girl's ears off. The other girl did some work, though. You know, Kiki's face wasn't clean, but she can box. Fuck, can she box? I made her... I, I picked three stars for, for the overall night. 
and I made Kiki my first star. Because, fuck. Kim Clavel. I don't even want to use the word female boxing anymore. I don't think I'm going to. She's a hell of a boxer. Point. Hell of a fucking boxer. We should be proud she comes from here. Sadradin Akhmedov. Uh, I tweeted something about this. Uh, I said, uh, Golden Boy Boxing, call Ali the Tiger. The name is Sadradin Akhmedov. Uh, the whole fight was a goddamn highlight. He picked and poked. Might I even say played with his food at a certain point. Smashed this dude. And this dude was tough. He took some shots to the head. Kept coming. And he was he was very vocal. You know, he's shaking his head and waving to the crowd. And doing little dancing moves with his legs. But here's the thing I like about Sadra Din, right? Uh, yes, he looks like a male model. And he plays the guitar. And he sings all soft and shit. And, you know... He's Kazakh, and there's horses in his life, so, like, I'm, I'm, I know he's, he gives a lot of ladies, lady boners, but, the dude fucking with him, damn, he got mean, he got mean on this motherfucker, everything this dude did, he paid for, straight up, everything this did, this guy did to clown in the ring, Akhmedov made sure he fucking paid for it. This is the type of fighter you want. This is the type of meanness you need. Uh, you gotta, you know, exert. You the man, all right. You're 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 in charge. You're the one who's who's got the bravado and everything else. <sighs> Sadrid and Akhmedov, man. He's only he's only had eleven fights. I mean, super welterweight. I I predict he's the next one to out of the group. Him and uh, Arslan Beck are probably the guys that are going to be heading towards the States next. Um, next up, my brother with the mullet, Simon Keen. Now, uh, here, I'm going to clue you guys in, okay? Journalists don't know this one. And I won't give you guys all the details because then I'd be a fucker. But Simon Keen had an injury, Okay. So if you found he fought a little stiff, trust me, uh, the dude was fighting through pain during the fight. So he was fighting through pain during the weigh-in. Props to him, man. <laughs> you know, he didn't want to fucking call off the fight. Which, knowing the injury, he could have. Um, props to him. WBC International Silver Heavyweight title. Big moment for Simon Keane. He boxed well. He boxed well. He had his moments. Uh, Lyakovich did well in the beginning, but Keane eventually broke him down. It went It went to the 10th, and the ref stopped it. A lot of people complained about the stoppage, but I'm like, well, like, th was the outcome going to be different if he didn't stop it? Okay. If the answer is no, then, yeah, maybe 30 seconds of him getting punched in the fucking head will save his life, so... If there's going to be no change in stopping it now, stop it now. So, I was okay with the stoppage. Next up, Arslan Bek Mahmoudov, Samuel Peter. Okay, so a lot of people complained about this fight, and I was telling everyone we just need somebody with a granite head. And I bit my tongue about it because I knew he was going to smash this dude, because he smashes everybody. But I was just like, once he smashes this dude, everyone's going to stop complaining about it, right? And that's pretty much what happened. Uh, the ref saved him. Like, he even looked at the ref and waved his hand. He was like, nope, no thank you. I just took his cleanest shot. I'm done. That's it. I'm confident he's retiring. Now, this is not to say that he wasn't, you know, worn torn. Uh, you know, he's been through a lot of wars. The man's got fucking close to 50 fucking fights. And he's fought Klitschko's, both of them. He's fought every fucking buddy, right? So, uh, no shame in him hanging them up. And if anything, this, you know, it's a passing of a torch, this sport. Mahmoudov was ranked 85th on BoxRec. And Samuel Peter, for everyone talking their shit, was still ranked 50. 
So uh, we just took our boy, took him from 85 and smoked the dude that's at 50. That's a proper fucking move. Don't debate me on it. I know I'm fucking right. Now the NABF heavyweight champ. Uh, the NABF is the WBC. And Camilla Stefan's a bad motherfucker because uh, he just straight up said that he'll put $20 million down and invite the winner of Wilder Fury to fight Mahmoudov. More than happy to. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, that's bullshit. Does he even have the money? Okay, first of all, yes, he has the money. He wouldn't fucking say it if he didn't fucking believe it. And um, although the possibility of it happening is low, that's how fucking confident he's in his dude. He's willing to put a fucking sizable chunk of his fucking network down in order to fucking make that fight happen. That's how confident he is in Arslan Beck. And, um, you know, it's the heavyweight game, man. I think it's a good bet. That being said, if it doesn't happen, oh well. We got a little press from it. And uh, the guy with the NABF title is mentioned in the same line as Deontay Wilder. There is nothing bad about that. I think it's a good move. David Lemieux, Bursack. God damn it, man. I won't lie to you, man. I was sitting up, sitting down, sitting up, sitting down, uh, walking over here, fucking on my knees over here. I don't want to see David lose, and I don't want to see him get knocked out, and he got knocked down twice, so, you know, the worst fucking creeps into your mind when you see your guy hit the, the, the floor, and, you know, I think about things, like, I know his daughter's in the room, you know what I mean, and... It, it's fucking tough. This game's so fucking brutal, man. He went up to 160 pounds. No one's giving him props. No one's giving him props for going up to 160 pounds, taking two knockdowns from a fucking beast like Bursak, and still winning the fucking fight. He scored a knockdown of his fucking own on top of that. Scorecards were tight, but I'm happy they were, because they weren't supposed to be fucking wide, okay? Because if they were wide, it would have been some bullshit, and the truth is, it would have been some home cooking. David pulled that out. David was the vet in this game. Everyone forgets David's been doing this since he's a fucking puppy. 45 fucking fights. Been doing this since forever. Was an amateur. I don't know what the move for him is. I don't know if he stays at 168. I don't know if he goes down. I don't know if I want to see him against Canelo. It's, you know what, it's a victory, but it's a little bittersweet because, you know, if if he would have blown Bursak out, everyone would be talking about big fights for him at 168. I don't know. I don't know what he does. At this point in his career, can he change his diet and go back down to 160? It's, it's you know, it's perplexing. It's a real, real question. I wouldn't want to be Camilo Stefan this month. <laughs> Just... So much going down. So much at stake. I I gotta give them props, you know, because they're taking a risk with this boxing stuff, man. You know, we're we're a fickle bunch, I guess. You could be a star today and hated tomorrow. Overall the crowd was cool. You always get those, I want to mention something, you always get those couple doofuses that get too excited from watching a fight and then they want to fight everybody. I was trying to run to go take a picture of David and people were blocking me and I'm like, excuse me, excuse me, I got a press pass, I just want to take a picture. I'm like, excuse me, excuse me, I'm cutting through people. I got one dude who's like, hey, je me calisse de ta pause, tu vas attendre comme les autres. By the way, that's me making a French accent. So he tells me I'm going to wait like everyone else. And I'm like, dude, I'm just trying to take a picture. I'm sorry if I bumped into you. And um, he's still going with it. It's at this point I realize he's got the, you know, bar mouth. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's where the teeth are going like this when they're looking at you. And he's got the crazy eyes. So I'm like, huh, okay. So you've been chewing on stuff, I guess, huh? All right, all right. Your nose seems a little bloody there, but... Um, Think I'm gonna let you uh, let you be. 
So I didn't fuck with him. Somebody else stepped in and was like, hey, you don't know who this guy is. He does this and this for boxing. And then he went after that guy. And I was like, dude, why'd you do that, man? I was I was cool with the guy being an idiot. Here's, here's a tip for all you guys. If something like that happens to you, right? There's no reason to step up to somebody like that. That motherfucker will fix himself. Trust me. He walked out of the place. He's still got to walk through another fucking 4,000 people in order to get home. That's the type of person that gets pulled over and tells the cop to fuck off. Right? Those human beings will solve themselves. So there's no need to panic. You know, if you see somebody being mean to me, I appreciate it. Don't worry. I'm cool. I've been in crazier, scarier situations. It's not, you know, one dumb fan that's going to fuck with me. Overall, great night of fights. Terrific night of fights at uh, the Bell Center. If you guys are just tuning in now, in about... 30 minutes this will be done from being live and you'll be able to rewatch it and watch the beginning if you're looking for the part where i talk about you or your fight um sorry you missed it so that's it for the bell center it was a crazy week like i said guys tune in make sure to check out my stuff this week i'm gonna put up i'm writing an article i offered it to some sites but then i realized i was gonna like one guy started talking to me about changing some stuff and whatnot and i was like you know what fuck it I don't want to fuck with this anymore. I'm going to just put it up on my page and you guys can do what you want with it. I'll let anybody use whatever they want from it. But uh, I'm not fucking changing it. I'm going to put it up the way I want to put it up. And that's the way it's going to go. So, uh, let me just run through here. And, uh, can I low? No questions. Just checking. Kenneth is saying he wants Lemire to get Canelo anyway, you know, to cash that check. I get it. But, I mean, David's a star anyways. Uh, if you if you looked at that crowd, he can do that again, you know, in a couple months. He can do that same crowd again here in Montreal. So, there's no rush in putting him with, in a crazy fight. And, you know, Canelo's fucking gone up to fucking 175. So, I, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Uh... Okay, uh, thank you, Maris. So, let's talk about what's going down this week, now that we got all the other stuff out of the way. Friday the 13th, a big Masonic day, if you know any Freemasons. Wish them a happy Friday the 13th, that's when they killed a whole bunch of, of, uh, the Knights of the Templar. Read up on your history, folks. Okay, so in France, oddly enough, talking about Templars, Yan Mendy, if you don't know him, uh, he's a longtime lightweight. He's fighting JD Pereira. It's a solid fight. I'm into it. There's also a light heavyweight I'm interested in. He's fighting for the WBA Intercontinental Light Heavyweight title. Uh, Mathieu Bordelic, if you don't know him, look into him. He's a really interesting fighter. Also on that card... Quebec Connection, Christian Mbili. We miss you, Mbili. Montreal misses you. One hell of a talent. Another guy that's gone up to 168 pounds. 15 and 0. Going to be making his 100, a super middleweight debut on this card, Friday the 13th. I really hope it's a lucky day for him. Le Solide. All right. Uh, also, Friday the 13th from Russia, Fedor Shudinov, super middleweight. He's fighting Hassam Nadam. I'm not a fan of Hassam Nadam. Hassam Nadam went to the Olympics and made a fool of himself so he can go fuck himself. Let's go shoot it off. All right. Um, okay, so a lot of people ask me about this. Yes, Bazinian is fighting Friday the 13th in Indio, California. Uh, no, it is not on Box Rec because they wait till the last minute. They did the same thing with Ulysses. So... Bazinian is going to be fighting on the Golden Boy card. Uh, also on there is Welterweight, Kiro Bayan versus Carcano, and a Super Welterweight, Bohachuk versus Galvan. Bohachuk's a bad motherfucker. He's 16 and 0. Uh, do yourself a favor. It's going to be free on Facebook, it's going to be on The Zone. Um, I'll have a link for it, worst case scenario. That being said, Bazinian is 23-0, 17 KOs, super middleweight. 
He's on the right track, 24 years old, young father, great story, definitely somebody you should follow along with. Um, his last fight was at the Hard Rock. He's the NABA super middleweight champ, the WBO NABO super middleweight champ. They got him fighting, hold up, let's pull up his name, Saul Roman, who's 45 and 13, but like I said, you got to watch out for these guys sometimes. He's 39 years old. He's coming off of two wins. If you go look at his losses, one of them's Dennis Duglin, who's a bad motherfucker. Um, the other one's a Mexican guy, but it was the fight got he stopped by the ref. So I'm not entirely sure he was out of that one. Uh, he lost to Curtis Stevens. You know, he's he's been around the block. He lost to Vanis Matrosian. So this is not even his first uh his first armenian so it's gonna be a second armenian but saul roman versus eric bazinian golden boy boxing eye the tiger make sure to check him out make sure you support him he's a young talent from here that you know i personally think in the very near future the states is gonna catch a whiff of you don't want to be one of the ones that are late to the bus uh saturday Tervel Pulev versus Webster, cruiserweight. He's 14 and 0. Super interesting. That's going down to Bulgaria. Also on that card, the big man Bogdan Dinu. Fuck a lot of you motherfuckers abandoned. Thank you for my Reese for staying till the end. We're almost done, so you know have some have a heart. At least watch the whole fucking thing. Okay, uh, that's going down in Romania. Bogdan Dinu. One of my favorites is a big man. I kind of wish maybe we get him for Arsene Beck next. That would be kind of cool too. Speaking of which, uh, check out my Instagram and uh, Sylvain Peltier. He got an interview with him. Uh, Donald Hainsworth, uh, heavyweight that Ida Tiger brought in in case any heavyweights dropped out at the last minute. And uh, he wanted to challenge Arslan Beck. Now, uh, he's either brave or stupid, but either one, I'm thankful he was there. So check out uh, my Instagram for that. Saturday, December 14th, ESPN, MTK, and uh, Top Rank. We got a card going down Saturday afternoon. Um, Usuiki, I, Lawrence Usuaki. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. It's some sort of African name. Light heavyweight uh, fighting Dan Az Azez. Uh, 10 and 0 English light heavyweight title on there. I'm bringing this up because the commission stopped the Montreal fights. You know, there's there's one fight that didn't happen because there was too many fights because it was going late. Uh, just to give you an idea, this card I'm talking about in England on Saturday has uh, 16 fights on it, and there's another one uh, going down in Russia that has 21. So our commission should really fucking grow a pair, or you know maybe age down a little bit you know if everyone wasn't 72 they wouldn't think midnight was late uh, but i guess you know with time that'll solve itself so maybe i'm speaking for nothing and just being mean but nonetheless i'm being who i am saturday night espn if you don't have it it's also going to be on tsn richard comey teofimo lopez the ibf world lightweight Titles on the line. Till Fimo's a highlight reel. Richard Comey's the real deal. That is a solid fucking fight. More importantly, the baddest motherfucker in the game. Welterweight Terrence Crawford fighting. Oh, this dude's name fucks me up. Idigus Calvalcacus. Not saying it twice. 35 and 0, 21 and 0. ESPN, TSN, make sure you tune in. There are undercards, but it's not on BoxRec, and I don't know what they are at this moment, but make sure you don't miss it. Also going down Saturday, uh, real quick shout-out in Pennsylvania, Alicia Baumgartner. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right, but she's bad. I like her. She's a lightweight. Uh, she's fighting Pacheco. Girl's been around the block. It's a good little card. I think there'll be a link to this on Facebook. As usual, hit me up. I'll be more than happy to give you guys the link. Okay, so. Talking for a while. I'm done, folks. 
if you got any other questions, if you're watching this a little later on, don't worry, I respond to all the comments. Make sure you share the fucking thing. This is the only way I get heard or seen, and uh, I don't get anywhere without you, so I'd really appreciate the help. That being said, homework assignment this week. Find someone random. Your waiter, the bus driver, the guy at the depaneur, the guy standing in line at the bus stop next to you, the parking attendant while you're parking the car at work, whoever. Ask them if they watch boxing. Regardless of their answer, tell them to check out Manny Montreal to Google me if they have to. That's it for me. Make sure you share this fucking thing. Thank you to those of you that watched it from beginning to end. Thank you to those of you that tuned in afterwards. I'll see you guys on the next one.